creating a timeless melancholy of death enveloped by the chill of the supernatural. It is an interesting fact that Irish writers over the centuries, driven by the collective unconscious of their mysterious Celtic past, have had such a profound influence in the genre of fantasy and horror fiction. Bram Stoker, Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu, Fitzjames O'Brien, M.P. Scheele, and Charles Maturin, to name but a few. Edgar Allan Poe's father was of Irish descent. This magnificent Gothic extravaganza, hidden deep within an ancient oak forest, was designed by Francis Johnston in the 19th century for the fabulously wealthy dilettante Richard Charles Bury, later Viscount Charleville. Both men shared an interest in mystical theories and geometry, citing the castle where several ley lines, paths which connect prehistoric sites, crossed. These time-worn tracks were believed by our distant ancestors to have been conductors of a positive primal energy or earth force. And at the points where they crossed, unusual levels of paranormal activity have always been reported. I have found this to be the case at a large number of buildings that I've photographed. And it came as no surprise to learn that this castle is the subject of several ghost stories and other supernatural phenomena. In one of the towers, there is a bedroom where the vaulted ceiling meets in an eight-pointed star, a geometric device which concentrates energy. And I was told that this room had been the subject of violent poltergeist activity over the years. Amongst the many apparitions that have been seen in the dark corridors and eerie cellars of the castle is the ghost of a little girl who died while sliding down the banister of this staircase. The present owner's children, aged four and six, have played with her and say that she told them that her name was Harriet and that she'd lived in the castle long ago. The children's mother told me that she was recently woken in the middle of the night by the sound of a child singing, followed by a piercing scream, and then silence. Another explanation for the existence of supernatural phenomena is what has become known as the tape recording theory. This concept proposes that certain inanimate objects, such as stone and wood, because of their chemical makeup and magnetic energy fields that surround them, are capable of storing extreme human emotions, much the same as modern recording techniques. And that when the conditions are right, particularly when the surroundings are damp, as in old buildings like this, and in the presence of a psychic or sensitive person, they can be replayed or reactivated. After dinner, I usually spend the time reading or catching up on my notes. Ghosts never seem far from my thoughts. <laughs> the 
the author colin wilson described the existence of a parallel supernatural world to me with the following analogy a man is driving at night through the countryside at speed the car headlights are full on and the radio is playing suddenly he slows down to a crawl switches off the radio dims the lights and winds down the windows he is now receptive to a completely different experience of the world one that is all too often obliterated by the demands and pace of modern living it is in this elevated state he suggested that we can be said to be truly alive The lonely ruin of Rathkill House lies on the wild coastline of the west of Ireland, an area rich in prehistoric standing stones and megalithic tombs. Its former owners, the Anglo-Irish Percival family, have long since left the area, but the terrifying hauntings that led to the destruction of their home live on in the memory of the local people. In the late 19th century, Giles Percival, an eminent archaeologist, traveled extensively in the Far East, bringing back a large collection of treasure, including Syrian swords and daggers and several mummies that he'd plundered from an Egyptian tomb. It would appear that almost as soon as these ancient artifacts were installed in the house, extremely unpleasant and malicious poltergeist activities began. A strange evil figure would be seen on the stairway at night and terrible loud crashes were heard throughout the house with crockery and ornaments found smashed the next morning. On one occasion, the whole house shook. Several of the servants left and a gardener was terrified by the apparition of a tall, dark shadow disappearing through the trees into the sea followed by maniacal laughter. The manifestations became so bad that the owners had a party of Jesuit priests exercise the mansion. But after three weeks, they were forced to leave, admitting that they were powerless in the face of such evil. The building was abandoned and now stands an empty shell. I found one room in the ruin particularly oppressive. The wall above the fireplace had strange patterns on the plasterwork. It was as if something terrible had once passed through this area. The ancient Egyptians like the Celts, attributed supreme powers to their priests and holy men. The mysteries of life and death were laid before them, and they could control the secrets of fate and destiny that were hidden from ordinary mortals. Each person, it was believed, had a shadow, or double, known as a car, which lived on inside the tomb when their physical body died. Here it was kept alive with fresh offerings of food, drink, and incense as well as fantastic treasures. But if these gifts were taken away, the spirit would wander abroad to reclaim them and to wreak havoc and death on those who defiled the tomb. I too believe that another dimension, a spirit world, runs parallel to our own so-called real world, and that sometimes, when the conditions are right, we can see into and become part of this supernatural domain. Surrounded by the ancient woods of Trua that date back to Celtic times, Castle Leslie's parklands and lakes retain all the mystery and peaceful grandeur of a bygone era. Home to the Leslie 